Cycling radar devices are one of the best pieces of technology that I've ever added to my bike. If I'm out here riding and a car, a truck, or anything is approaching from behind, I'll know about it well in advance with an alert from my bike computer and via my headphones. But by default, once a vehicle has passed, that information disappears. The alert level returns to green, and it's like nothing has ever happened. So in today's video, I cover the ins and outs on something that I've been using for quite some time now. It is the My Bike Radar Traffic Connect IQ data field that will record passing vehicle locations, speeds as they approach and pass you, and will also give you a vehicle count on compatible head units or watches. For me, this is a must have if you're a radar user and have a compatible unit for this Connect IQ data field. Before getting into the details, this video today is sponsored by Shox, formerly known as Aftershocks. They make open ear bone conducting headphones, which a lot of people have been recommending that I try out after seeing me use wired headphones for my Varia radar alerts in other videos. I'll have more details on these headphones later in the video and a portion of this sponsorship will be donated to the My Bike Traffic project. Okay, onto the details. My Bike Radar Traffic, what it does. Well, as I said there in the intro, it records Ant Plus radar detections along with GPS location and speeds of vehicles approaching you. It can display information in a configured data field on a compatible Garmin bike computer or watch. Once your activity is complete, the passing vehicle information can be viewed with Garmin Connect on the web, Garmin Connect mobile, or if you really want to dig deep into the data, mybiketraffic.com gives you the ability to see all the recorded data on a map. On to what you'll need to get this up and running. Well, it's compatible with any Ant Plus radar device from the RTL 500 all the way through to the RCT 715 from Garmin and also the Magin L508, which is an Ant Plus compatible radar. You'll then need a compatible Garmin head unit or watch. I believe the minimum head unit spec is the Edge 820 onwards. There is a full list of compatible Garmin devices over on the Connect IQ website, which I'll link to in the video description below. And once installed, all you need to do is go and configure one of the data fields to show this information on any of the pages of the active profile that you're using. Now, before getting into the configuration, more details on these Shox headphones. I have had a lot of people mention to me that I should try bone conducting headphones after seeing me use the standard wire headphones in other videos. So when Shox reached out, I was more than happy to try them out. The Open Run were formerly known as Aeropex, if anybody was familiar with those. Now, Open Run has a few updates to the Aeropex, namely Bluetooth 5.1 and Fast Charge. They're also IP67 waterproof and come with an eight hour battery life. You'll get full control buttons for volume, music control, and summoning Siri, or your phone voice control, or even taking calls if that's your thing while on the bike. They'll also work with the new music control widget rolled out on the Garmin Edge devices, giving you control for your music or podcasts, etc while you're riding. With these not being an in-ear headphone or earbud, it means you get the best of both worlds when using the Garmin Varia app for radar alerts. There's no compromise to ambient noise or sounds, and you'll still hear the app alerts when there is a radar detection. Given the wraparound fit of the Open Run, I was very skeptical on how they'd work when wearing a bike helmet and or sunglasses. But after a few weeks of use, I had no issues with this and they're fit out on the road. So it's a big thanks to Shox for sponsoring this video today. More details on these in the video description below. Okay, now let's get to the configuration of this Connect IQ data field. Now this data field can be installed via the Connect IQ web store, which you then assign which Garmin device you want it installed on, and that will then summon Garmin Express after we click allow on the permissions and you do the sync via USB cable. It's just a bit messy. The better way is to use the Connect IQ app on the mobile device, as you're seeing here on the left. I have the Edge 1040 over there on the right. Hit search and then just type the word radar. It's the easiest way to find this one. And third there on the list, my bike radar traffic. We then click install. We can allow for those permissions. We wait for things to sync up. The 1040 over there on the right is currently synced via Bluetooth to this mobile device. We wait a few seconds for that. And there we go, congratulations. The data field is installed. From here, we can click on settings which will then load the default configuration showing only the vehicle count or the number of vehicles that has been detected during the ride. You can also show lap totals, approach speed relative or absolute, and a few other things. The ones I like to turn on is display vehicle speed, absolute, display last vehicle speed. So if something passes you really quickly, you can uh, have a look down and see what speed they were doing. And there's also display closest vehicle distance. That's the latest addition to this Connect IQ data field. I'm not quite sure whether that's very useful or not because the dots along the side of your Garmin will give you an indication of how far things are away anyway. Alrighty, from there hit save in the top right hand corner once you're happy with everything. 
click OK on that, wait for things to sync over, and it's time to head over to the Garmin and configure the data field to be displayed on at least one of the pages you're using. So press and hold, a quick way to get to the configuration there, scrolling down, scrolling down, connect IQ, and right there at the bottom, my bike traffic is the field we wanna add. One click on that and away we go. So we have vehicle count, absolute speed, last passing speed, and the distance of the closest vehicle that it has detected. Okay, so there's no numbers shown on screen here because I'm configuring this indoors. Let's jump outside with the radar on the bike to show you what it's all about. Okay, I've put the Connect IQ data field as the main field here on the 1040, so it's easier to see for this example. And here comes our first car, successfully detected, speed being recorded, distance reducing, and vehicle count going up by one. So that's it out on the road. Pulling up the data from mybiketraffic.com post ride on that exact pass, and it was that pass right there at 10.15.25. The first speed detection was 106 kilometers per hour, and the car slowed down just a little bit as it come past me. So you can see the vehicle range here, 118, 93, 71, 50, 28, and six meters behind me, speed reducing, and there's my rider speed there. And that's the same for every one of these vehicle detections. You've got all that information on screen. Let's have a look at another one where the car slows down before passing. A faster section of road here, which is a little troublesome for the RCT 715 and it not having stabilization. But along comes a very, very sweet looking AMG. Now I am a bike person, but you gotta admit the AMGs are quite a nice car. Slows down right here, waits for a car coming in the other direction to pass. And away it goes. And that does sound so, so nice. This was a very fast section of roads. So let's have a look at the data. Again, post ride after this fit file was uploaded to mybiketraffic.com. We can see all the details. Bingo, got it correct too. That was the one right there. So the first detection was 103 meters all the way down, and you can see the car slowing right down from 89 kilometers per hour down to 59 kilometers per hour as it waits for the car to pass and overtake me. My speed here recorded, so the relative speed to me wasn't a lot. It slowed right down to around, what, 10 kilometers per hour coming up behind me before it passes. And it's rinse and repeat for all of these dots, including even the cars in town here, which is, uh, that was a 60 kilometer an hour zone. And you can see the car detected there at 54 kilometers per hour. If you're asking yourself, how reliable are these numbers? Are they accurate? Well, I had the exact same question, so I put it to the test. Okay, there's a lot going on here for this test. So let me explain what we have here on screen. I'm about to drive towards the stationary Varia radar that's placed on the side of the road in my car and accelerate up to around 100 kilometers per hour. I'm recording the car speed with the Waze app on the iPhone. Car speed will be indicated right here. And as before, the Connect IQ data field for the radar data will be up here in the center of the screen. So you can see that as the car approaches. Alrighty, have a little llama in the car telling me that yes, that acceleration was pretty quick. He was having heaps of fun. Okay, approaching the radar now, and there's the detection. So distance, 125 meters. The speed detected is 97 kilometers per hour on the radar. And down there in the Waze app, 96 kilometers per hour, so not too far off. And as I play through and I keep approaching, that locks onto about 97 kilometers per hour. The car did decelerate to around 95 kilometers per hour, but that was actually pretty close. Personally, I think this functionality should be standard on any head unit that supports radar devices. Recording vehicle speeds and detection locations is very, very useful information. Now imagine Garmin or Strava collating all of this information from say tens or hundreds of thousands of riders to give us better bike routing options based on maybe the time of day and how busy the traffic is. Knowing where traffic is and how busy it is is something we take for granted on car GPS units, but it's something we're yet to see on bike navigation. Of the thousands and thousands of cars that have passed me when I've been recording their data, most of it's just thrown away and ignored, but I did have one instance where I went back and had a look at the data. On the right, I had a car approach me and accelerate towards me. I could hear the engine rev up. Well, rev up, I guess, in a car. They buzzed me super close and continued on up the road. Now, when I got home, loaded up the data, saw that the first detection was 96 kilometers per hour. And as they passed me, they were doing well in excess of 100 kilometers per hour. That's a speed limit here. Now, let's say they either hit me or maybe up the road, they wrapped their car around a tree. I'd have recorded evidence of their idiot behavior early on. 
Now, some people have asked, is this data good enough to convict them in a court of law? Well, look, I'll let Judge Judy deal with that. But having that information had cost me nothing. And let's say I was flattened out on the road. Having that data recorded could be a very, very important thing. And as such, this is why I believe this functionality should be built in by default on all head units and watches that support radar devices. But in the absence of that, go and install this Connect IQ data field. It may not come in handy every ride, but that one ride where you might need that data could make a big difference. Alrighty, we'll wrap it up there for today. As always, links to all this in the video description below. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel, and we'll see you soon.